Hello everybody, I am Florent Dubost and today I'm going to show a presentation about semi supervised learning for sparsely labeled sequential data and application to healthcare video processing. This is a work done at Stanford University. The general settings that you have a sequence of uh, data, so for example a little video clip, that has sparse label. So for example, you, if you do event detection, you would just have the beginning of the event, but you won't have access to the end time. So what you can do in that case is that you could sample as positive a little subclip that just follows your sparse start label uh, and have a conservative model using only that as positive for training. Or you could sample more samples further away from that sparse label as positives and use that with a risk tolerant model for your training. The contribution in this work is a training strategy for semi-supervised learning with sparsely labeled sequential data that leverages what I just explained, a mathematical model for explaining and estimating the evolution of classification performance for increasingly noisier event time estimates, so increasingly further from your start time, and finally, a more application type of contribution a uh, method that detects events from video recording of hospital neonate patients uh, with epilepsy. So here are some examples. MNIST, we created a little sequence of images where a zero progressively leaves the image. You could see this as a little movie clip. So positive is when the zero is in the image, negative when it's not. And here the actual cutoff would be here, but we overestimate the end time and we include that sample as positive in our training sets uh, when it's actually negative. Here is the same type of uh, method where we have a person clapping their hand. Here there is a cutoff and they start jumping. And we overestimate the end time and select those two images as positives, although they are negative. And we'll see how that affects the training performance. So if you think of, you know, varying your risk level and where you estimate your end time, you can model that as a product of two sigmoid. First one that takes into account the positive impact of increasing uh, your training set with more positive, true positive samples, and the other one which accounts for introducing false positives in your training set that are going to deteriorate your performance. If you do those experiments on, for example, CIFAR, you see that um, you have a bell-shaped curve where the optimal performance is for like middle time uh, of event end estimate and risk level. You, you have similar results on moving MNIST and a bit it's a bit different on MHAD, which I'm going to quickly explain now, uh, using this example as on hospital videos. So here we compare the model with a uh, fully supervised method and with pseudo label methods. And you see that if you select the right risk level, you can have a performance that's similar to that of the free supervised method. And actually a bit, a bit higher sometimes. Uh, the reason is that for some classes, the performance doesn't decrease when you overestimate the end time because it's sampling some classes that were not accounted for in your training set and that don't harm the classification performance. The take home message is, is that with this uh, sampling method, you can achieve a performance that's similar to the fully supervised approach. And in case of merging classes, such as the one I just showed, uh, structure training, you can imp uh, approximate that aspect, that impact as a si single sigmoid. Thank you for your attention and see you at the poster.